So, um, welcome to our new form of worship and to everybody watching online as well, a special welcome to you. We've called this uh, Worship Together and you'll see on your service sheets that there's some things in bold type. If it's in bold type when we get to it, everyone says it together. Uh, if it's in ordinary type, I will say it. Uh, but so that there's a voice going into the microphone for the recording, you're going to hear me say the bold type as well. And if you can step in tune with me, that would be really helpful. Stage directions being made. Uh, so as we begin, this, we recognise this feels a bit strange. Does it feel a bit strange to you? Yeah. And we've never met together sitting in face masks or, or with my visor. And I gave everybody a special treat at nine o'clock, trying to drink my drink my drink to my visor. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't quite work. Um, but there are words for us to join with it, and we're going to start by a prayer. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that even in strange circumstances, you are with us by your Spirit. Thank you that you promised that wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. Thank you that you promised the gift of your Spirit. So please come to us now and help us to put aside the strangeness uh, and to meet with you, to encounter you, and to know your presence with us. Whether we're watching at home on our own, whether we're together in the building, dear Lord, come and speak to us as a Heavenly Father speaks to his children. In Jesus' name, Amen. And uh, I, think, I thought, what better, no, what better way to start than with words from the Apostle Paul about Jesus, these great words. Uh, who Jesus, being in very nature God, Jesus didn't consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of the servant. Being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving power. Speak in us, wisdom of God. In strength, healing, and peace. The Lord is here. The Spirit is in us. And together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom those secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth isn't in us. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, for our own deliverance. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, 
Have mercy upon us, pardon, deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we come to worship God together. Uh, now we're not allowed to sing out, and I'm not supposed to do anything that will make you shout or, or sing, but hopefully you can sing in your heads and in your hearts, and there are going to be three songs on the screens for us to join in with in that sort of way. Father, I pray as we turn to worship that you'll help us to, to respond to you, again to meet with you, and to offer our praise and adoration to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. kingdom come Lord teach us how to pray for all to know your joy your peace and love and know your friendship each and every day the breath of Christ the Father's chance Set us free 
Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me. For you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. They will spend their days in prosperity, and their descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and free me from my anguish. Look on my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. See how numerous are my enemies and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope, Lord, is in you. Deliver Israel, O God, from all their troubles. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. And if you want to suggest a number of a range of responses to the day, I think we have at nine o'clock we have a number of different responses from one till nine, and uh, it just strikes me that in that same psalm, in the same verses, trust, but also anguish. And uh, if in any one day you find yourself having a different number of responses to what's going on. You're not on your own, and that is part of the journey of faith that we all of us walk on. So some extra words for us to join together as we seek God for the whole of our lives. So it's on the page there, uh, under the section, working it out. Again, I will start. This great faith, the knowledge of Jesus, the presence of God's Spirit. We have this treasure in jars of clay. To show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. May our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God our Father, who loved us and by His grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope. Encourage our hearts and strengthen us in every good deed and word. Amen. And uh, we come to look into the word of God again and we have our first reading from John's Gospel. Which Sarah will come and do. John 15. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remained in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may not be in you, and that your joy may be complete. I think I've read that wrong. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friend 
if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will, will give you. This is my command. Love each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. And I pray as we look into the Scriptures, Heavenly Father, that you speak to us and encourage our hearts to help us to be steadfast in faith. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, I thought I'd let you into a little bit of a trade secret, which I was thinking earlier on in the week about uh, coming and preaching again, Will I remember how to do it. Because for the last few months, I've been staring into a phone on my own in a study with no people there. And then if you make a mistake, you can stop it and start again. Uh, so it must also feel a bit strange sitting behind your masks, uh, not really a, sort of a joining with singing and things like that. But again, we pray that God will speak through these different circumstances. If God can still a storm, uh, he can come and speak to us even now. Uh, and uh, over the last few weeks, I've been looking uh, with you, uh, if you've been on, managed to get on the internet, uh, at some phrases I felt God speak to me when I asked the question, Father, what are you doing? So we've been looking at some of these phrases of what God is doing in his church in, in, in Sabido. And I think what God is promising us is things like this. That he says, I'm creating a people for my own possession. I'm sanctifying you. Long process. I'm creating compassion and love. I'm making a body who will praise me. Uh, I'm meeting the needs of many. And then today I want to look at three more phrases. Two, one a bit more, and two very briefly. So here's a phrase that I think God spoke to me, uh, which says, I'm calling my children to serve me. Uh, I'm calling my children to serve me. Uh, and there are lots of reasons why I think from a Bible point of view it makes sense to, to take note of that phrase and I find it quite helpful for myself as well. So in John 15, which we have read, uh, and I'm going to read another letter, another portion in a moment of, of Galatians, uh, in John 15 we hear uh, Jesus painting this picture of faith where he says, I'm the vine, you are the branches, remain in me. So if you want to grow as a disciple, if you want to take note of things, you have to keep on being attached to the vine in this picture, like a branch is attached to the vine. Uh, and so you have to keep on trusting, keep on being connected to him, keep on being loyal to him, keep on seeking his spirit, uh, letting his spirit be at work in us. Uh, and it's fairly obvious that if a branch is taken away, it doesn't grow. So in my garden, I have a little tree, and one of them grows so profusely that uh, the branches hang down there. So this is a branch of my crab apple tree. But as you can see, uh, now I've cut it off, it's not going to grow much more, is it? In fact, it's looking a bit sorry for itself. And uh, that is the point that Jesus says you need to remain in him, attached to the attached to the tree. If you're no longer attached to the vine, you're not you're not going to grow. You can always be drafted back in, of course. And he creates this picture where, um, by being close to him, uh, he also promises the experience that if you pray in his name, anything you ask will be granted. Now, many of us will have the experience of praying, and things don't always seem to work out the way we ask for. But I think the picture is that. The more we are close to Jesus, the more, uh, the more we are connected to him and grow in understanding his ways, and the, then when we pray, the more likely it is that our prayers will be answered anyway, because we'll be praying from a pure heart and a wise brain. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, 
the praise of a pure heart and a wise brain. Uh, uh, and it takes a while to get there. We keep going. Uh, and Jesus carries on with this theme that being connected to him will also produce in us love. And if we, if we keep his commands, we'll be staying in his love. But the thing I wanted to highlight in it is that um, this thing about he says to him, I'm not calling you servants anymore, but I'm calling you friends. I'm not calling you servants anymore, I'm calling you friends. And I think that is really important to remember and really helpful. And we'll go on to the children bit in a moment. Servants, of course, always have things to do. Don't they? That's the common. There have been servants in the world and in ancient times who, who rose to quite great heights. So Daniel was a servant and he became very important and influential because of his great gifts and that God put him in the right place at the time. Or, right time. or Joseph, earlier than that, in Egypt, uh, was a servant but he rose to, to have great authority and used wisdom to help the country out. Or the prophet Elijah had a servant called Elisha who washed his hands. But then Elisha went on to do great miracles for God. So servants sometimes go on and do all, all sorts of things. But the point is whether it's great big things or little things, it doesn't really matter. The common denominator of all servants is that they have tasks to do and they have to get on and do them. But Jesus says, I'm not, you're not just servants with tasks to do, you're friends. So anything that God asks us to do, and let's not beat by the bush, well, God will always be asking us to do things as well, to serve him and to do the tasks he points for us to do. But we're not to do them just as servants, we do them as the friends of God. So in his presence, with his help, with his support, with his friendship, to, to strengthen us. So when Jesus says, you need to remain in me, attached to the vine, it's not saying you're going to be hemmed in and stuck. It's so not, it's not to crush us or keep us down. It's to build us up so that he can impart his life to us. The problem with my branch down here is that it's not going to get any more life from the roots of the tree. And if we remain rooted in Jesus, uh, attached to him, he can then impart his life to us more and more. His love can flow to us more and more. His, his heartbeat can become our heartbeat and our values can become his values. And then in that, he also says, uh, I have chosen, it's not that you've chosen me, I have chosen you and appointed you to bear much fruit. Chosen and appointed is a great description of calling. God is a calling for all of us to serve him. We are chosen, and everybody wants to be chosen. <laughs> Nobody wants to be left out or neglected, but to be, so to be chosen by God is a great thing. And appointed means that God has a purpose for our lives, and one of the great quests for us as believers and followers is to know what are the sorts of things God is calling us to do. What has he chosen us for? What has he appointed us to do? Uh, so God is calling us, his children, to serve him. And it's a great thing to find out what are the things that God is calling us to do in our lives. Uh, but also from uh, Galatians uh, chapter 4, we can move on from talking about what Jesus says in, in John's Gospel about being friends to being, to being children. Paul, Paul writes in Galatians chapter 4, when the time of fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are his sons, uh, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. Uh, this theme of not being servants but friends and not being slaves but sons and daughters is a really great thing for us because I think sometimes in the life of faith and you can wave at me if this has ever happened to you but you don't feel, don't feel you have to, no pressure and sometimes it can get to a point where you're trying to hold on in faith but it, 
it feels like you're just plowing on reluctantly. Anybody ever got there? No, never. <laughs> uh, or, or sometimes you, you're, you're holding on to faith where it feels like you're at the end of your tether. And sometimes you're going on dutifully and loyally, but somehow the joy of it all has slipped away and drained out. And sometimes you can even become, uh, even though you're outwardly trying to serve God and you are doing stuff, you can also become a bit bitter and twisted inside. I'm not looking at anybody in particular, um, but I'm sure that happens sometimes. And so it's a great thing to remember that we are called to serve, we are given tasks to do by God. There is work to do, but we are to do it knowing that we're his friends, knowing that we're his children, and knowing therefore that he loves us and cares for us and knows all the different range of responses that we have in any one day. And it's important for not to be like that. And I think then if we can always come back to remember that we are called as friends and children of God, that will encourage us and help us to be able to work for Him with a willingness and devotion and a mindset and a heart set that becomes healthy rather than something that drags us down. Because it is a battle to keep on in the life of faith. And uh, it is a battle to, to fight things off when things are dragging us down. But the call is to know that we serve as children completely loved and that our heart and attention will then be grabbed by Jesus. And then the next two things on my list of things I've had God speaking to me also um, sort of build on this picture. So the next just little brief thing I want to talk about is God saying, I'm setting a people with deep roots in my love and in my scriptures. It's so important for our roots to be in the right place. Uh, now, you will know, over the years now, I've had to do quite a lot of gardening in my garden, uh, not just cutting off branches, but I've transplanted plants, and some of them, when I've moved them, have grown really well. Uh, you might be surprised at that. Um, and sometimes, because some of them thrive better with a bit more light or a bit more sun and not so crowded in. And sometimes our roots as people up the roots of our understanding of faith can be a little bit in the wrong place. Sometimes our family influences from the past can put our thinking in the wrong place. Um, so, for example, in some families, children brought up and they're made to feel that they're useless. Well, if, you, if that is what feeds your thinking, it's not helpful to you. It's not your fault that you've been told that, but it's not helpful. So your roots are in the wrong place. Uh, or sometimes in our country, the attitudes that we're brought up with or, or that affect us, the, work, the, the ideas that float around, they're not helpful to us, so our roots can be in the wrong place. And it is helpful to us and healthy for us if our roots are set, transplanted into the, the scriptures and the truth that they tell us about ourselves and about God, and that are the roots of our lives, the thoughts that we have, the emotions we have, are transplanted into knowing that we're in the love of God, watered by the Spirit. Or my final thing is the, the phrase that God's promising that I'm lifted, that He's lifting up the picture of His Son. We always have to grow in the picture we have of Jesus. If we want to remain in His love, we have to grow in our, our understanding. So I know for myself that um, over the years, uh, my, some of my attitudes have, have changed. You would hope that would be true, wouldn't it? If I, I became a Christian when I was 19, if I had exactly the same faith as I had when I was 19 uh, and had not grown anything, that would be a bit sad, uh, even though it was only a couple of years ago. Mm. Yeah. We have to grow in. So I know that when I first became a Christian, maybe the, the one thing that was important more than anything else was that I was forgiven, which is still a really, really, really important thing. But also then I grew to understand, with other people's help, that I'm a child of God. Not just forgiven, but loved and cherished by my Heavenly Father. Or maybe at one time, people talked about going to heaven a lot. As if that was the main goal, it's a great thing to look forward to, the glory that there will be. But also the Bible talks about a new heaven and a new earth. So we are, as Christian people, are to join in the work of making the world as it is a better place. 
because we have a great new heaven, new earth to look forward to. Or at one time, it may have been to me that what really mattered was, if you like the phrase, the people's individual salvation. It was important for each person to know God for themselves, and that really, really, really is true. But at the same time, the Bible is also concerned very much, and Jesus talked about this, about the poor and, and, and justice. And so that's a big part of the Bible's world picture. We need our picture of Jesus to grow and grow and grow all of the time. Or at first, maybe, for me, that, that sense of personal faith, individual faith, was really important. And so it is. Everybody needs to have their own faith. Nobody else can have faith for you. But over the years, what has become more and more clear is that we need the other Christian people around us. The church is such an important thing, so we learn together about the love of God. And so, God is calling his children to serve him. And the question is, are we then ready to say, yes, I want that for me? To be reconnected with him, to grow in him, to be, to let our minds be transplanted into the good soil of the scripture teaching and his love. To ask ourselves, are, is there stuff I'm neglecting? Is there stuff I need to see that's new? So that we are fully on board, if you like, with the plan and purposes that God has for our lives. I'm going to say a short prayer now, and then we're going to listen to a song that when I survey and have time to be quiet for our own thoughts and reflections on what God may be speaking to us. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are a God who speaks to us, that you are a God who cares for us. Thank you that you are calling us as children to serve you. And I pray, dear Lord, that you will help us to respond to you by your Spirit. You will help us to grow healthily as your children. Come Holy Spirit, even as we listen again to, to, a song, to a song, and speak your word into our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. When I
Love demands my soul. My life, my Central aisle, right out through the back door. You've probably never been out through before. 